Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 15th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Kim and I started the day at the Charlotte Pier where we met our friend Greg and enjoyed a nice sunrise on a calm morning. Here's a long-tailed duck that was swimming beside the pier and they're just really stunning looking in this darker spring plumage. And here's a belted kingfisher that flew over and we know it's a female because of all the brown on the underside. We had a total of 26 species, but we did not have any shorebirds, which were really our main target. Next, we headed over to the Firehouse Woods. Here's a European starling with some kind of bug in its beak. And starlings actually change their plumage through feather wear. So when they're fresh and have new feathers, those feathers have white tips to them, which gives them a really speckly appearance underneath. But as they get more worn like this, they get a more glossy appearance. Here's a gray cat bird. Notice that it's gray overall with a darker cap, and you can also see some orange here in the undertail. Here's a great crested flycatcher, which is a large flycatcher from the genus Myarchus. And there's several other species that look very similar to these in other parts of the country, but here in the Northeast, this is the only species that we have to deal with. You can see it's got a lot of yellow underneath and also has some rufous highlights to the wings and tail. Overall, it was much less birdy than other recent days, and we had only 42 species and very few warblers. Next, we crossed the road and walked a bit of the Lakeview Church Trail. Here we have another flycatcher, and this one, we see sort of a dusky vest to the underside and a lot of gray to the head and even a bit on the throat. And we heard this bird sing, which is the easiest way to identify many of these flycatchers. This is an eastern wood peewee, my first of the season. Here we have a warbler that has a lot of black on the top of the head, which will be important for the name, and a lot of white here in the face. This is a black pole warbler. And perhaps the most similar confusion species would be black and white warbler, but I always think of them as looking more like zebra stripes, whereas on the black pole you have that completely black top of the head, a lot of white to the face, and not as much black and white streaking and striping overall. Plus the behavior is quite different. Black and white warblers like to crawl up and down small tree branches, whereas black pole warblers are usually medium to high up. And black pole warblers also have very distinctive yellow legs and feet, and that can be an important field mark to use, especially in the fall when they're not in this nice breeding plumage. At the church trail, we had 38 species. Next, I headed over to the Hawkwatch, where it was a very slow day. It was overcast with a moderate northeasterly wind. Those winds did weaken as we got into the afternoon, but it just remained a really gloomy day and not too much raptor activity overall. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and rounded wings, so we should be thinking excipiter, and this one was relatively small, more compact looking with a more squared off tip to the tail and a small head. This is a sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a very fresh juvenile bald eagle. We usually call these southern juveniles. Birds like this are ones that are born south of us over the winter, so they're just completely fresh. You can see how dark the head and the underside of the body are. Very little feather wear or fading, no signs of molt. Just very cool, clean, dark looking bald eagles. For the Hawkwatch today, I had 46 species. And when I got home and was getting out of the car, this Tennessee warbler was perched up nicely on a fence. And I had to take a photo because this is the best look I've had at a Tennessee warbler all spring. I've been hearing them all over the place, but it's hard to get a good look at them sometimes. I had a total of 79 species for the day. I had one new species for the season, which was Eastern Wood Peewee. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 10 turkey vultures, one bald eagle, and one sharp-shinned hawk for a total of 12 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 10,956 and the season total to 63,559. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy early with partial sunshine late with a high in the mid-60s, winds north-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So I would expect light migration, maybe once the sun starts to pop out, there'll be some thermals and we'll get moderate migration, but we may end up having to move to Frisbee Hill. For Friday, it's looking cloudy early with showers for the afternoon with thunder possible, high around 70, and light southeasterly winds. So with those gloomy conditions and only light winds, I would expect only light migration, maybe moderate just because there is a southerly component.
And for Saturday, it's looking cloudy with a few showers with a high in the upper 60s. And again, light east southeast winds would only expect light migration. All right, another good day of birding, although there weren't really as many birds around today as there have been other recent days. I think migration didn't end up being that good last night, although had a good time getting out. The weather was fairly nice for the first few hours of birding. A very slow day over at the Hawk Watch. It just never really brightened up. Occasionally, there were small groups of turkey vultures getting up, but overall, not too much action, which is okay because it gave me a chance to come back home early and get caught up on a few things and get some rest so that I can go out and put some more energy into the good days. That's never a bad thing. Hope to see you out in the field soon or up on the platform. From LEGO Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.